My name is Francesco Verso, and I'm a, a science fiction writer and editor of Future Fiction. I've edited uh, some anthologies in Italian and uh, in English, and uh, one of them also in uh, Chinese. Um, the uh, intention of this presentation is to show you um, the themes and the authors and the projects about the Chinese science fiction. I just mentioned before uh, the uh, project in, in Italian, but I will tell you again in English, I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, uh, you can see the solar panel installation, it looks like a panda. You can see floating uh, solar panels on the rivers uh, of China. Uh, you can see uh, futuristic projects of uh, uh, connecting high-speed trains like the One Belt, One Road initiative. Uh, you can see, of course, the 5G, high-tech China, all that revolves around uh, uh, high-speed networks and uh, uh, low-latency projects. Uh, for example, a sustainable city developed by uh, Italian architect Stefano Boeri um, that will probably happen in the next years. In China, they have a, uh, a project of building some 20, 25 of these cities uh, in the next uh, um, 20 years. And the last one, very important, is the Great Green Wall. Uh, it's supposed to tackle the uh, progression of the desertification in the north of China with uh, uh, planting millions of, um, uh, of trees. Um, so all these projects, uh, they look like coming out straight from a science fiction book, uh, but indeed uh, uh, they are what the, the uh, Chinese people, the Chinese government, the Chinese companies are working at the moment. Uh, and the Chinese science fiction writers, they have this map as reference um, in, the, in, in the way they, they create it and they create uh, so far their stories. Uh, but let me tell you this. Uh, this is a, is a big infographic. Uh, you can find it in the uh, website of World Shelley. Uh, I will not go into that, but the reason why I mentioned this is because, as you can see, uh, this is the history of Western science fiction. Uh, you can see that it starts with uh, the Frankenstein, it goes into the golden age of science fiction, and Asimov and Iron Line, and then the cyberpunk and William Gibson, all the story that many fans of the, and scholars of science fiction know about. But when I went to the first science fiction convention where they invited me in Chengdu three years ago, I saw this map showed and printed on a big wall. And I just said, well, but this is not your science fiction. This is not the Chinese science fiction map. So in just six, seven months, my friends at Future Affair Administrations, they came up with this another <laughs> infographic showing the history of Chinese science fiction. So just to show you that we are so influenced by the Western culture, we are so inclined to think that we are the only one to have these kind of idea, material, books, and culture, or science fiction, that we don't even consider our own identity, our own culture of having the roots and the development of science fiction as well. So I will not uh, go deeply into this, but let me tell you a bit about the history of uh, Chinese science fiction. Of course, it starts with the late Qing dynasty, and it has a kind of, uh, spreading optimism uh, towards new technology and try to teach new generation of people uh, the technologies that are emerging at that time. Of course, there is afterwards uh, a big important Soviet influence that will be uh, prolonged until 1945. Then something happens, there is a, a break because with the reform era, um, the science fiction starts to be considered a kind of uh, spiritual pollution because it comes from uh, mostly the West uh, with, you know, the translation of, uh, of the big uh, golden age master of science fiction. And uh, so in this period of time, science fiction is considered something that uh, should not be published, should not be promoted, should not be even read sometimes. So it's a very hard time at the moment, at that moment. Then after 1990s, there is what uh, uh, some scholars uh, call the new wave. Uh, Professor Sun Wen Wei uh, called this 
kind of new rebirth of science fiction, the hidden and solitary army. Uh, it means that science fiction can talk about what normal mainstream literature cannot talk about using the trope and the metaphor of the future, uh, namely utopia and dystopia. So in a way, it is considered the literature of the invisible. And uh, from these invisible doors, uh, the Chinese science fiction writers can really represent uh, important parts of the uh, Chinese future or what is considered possible routes to the, to the future of the country. And of course, uh, now many influences are all together tied because what in the West was received in a matter of around a hundred years in China was received probably in 20, 30 years. So it's all very much compressed. You have golden age, cyberpunk, you have climate fiction, you have posthumanism, you have a, a new wave, uh, you have all different kind of science fiction uh, getting together at the same time. So sometimes people can be confused about this. But I want to mention, uh, of course, you see the three uh, important books, one, is one the past, Lao Shu, the cut country, but I'd like, of course, to mention Liu Cixin and the three-body problem that completely changed the picture in, in China and, let me say, also in many other countries because from that moment, uh, from the moment when Ken Liu translated the first book and won the uh, Yugo Award, then uh, uh, things started to be, for Chinese science fiction writers, a little bit different, more consideration, more translations, of course, because China is getting more and more importance and more relevance on a worldwide market. So the soft power, it's following the hard power in means manufacturing. So the idea that the Chinese uh, people want to promote also a their, made their, their picture of the future, their imagination, their idea of, of, of the future is very positive for me because um, we can have two point of views. I believe in a multiple uh, point of views for the future. I believe that the equilibrium can be reached only if we have not one source of, of stories, but multiple sources of stories. All right. Uh, so who are the most important uh, writers? Of course, I have mentioned uh, Liu Cixin. You probably have heard about the body problem you probably have seen the wandering earth on netflix a big blockbuster that was uh, uh shown on netflix uh in on the west world uh, on our world let's say <laughs> on our side of the world um but uh let me let me mention also wang jing kang very important uh, uh science fiction writer he's uh, more focused on um biology and um uh, more also on the the human impact of biology on, uh, sorry, the biological impact um, on the society, uh, how the uh, biotechnologies, how the manipulation uh, can affect parts of, uh, of, our, of our reality. And uh, of course, also Han Song, uh, which is kind of different from other writers because um, he's more like into kind of uh, weird and weird science fiction uh, is, is writing is very, um, sorry, um, is, is, is writing is very, um, in a way, realistic, but in a way he puts some kind of uh, bizarre elements that completely change the perception of the reality we have so much that he has been considered the Chinese Kafka, let me say. And we will, mo we will go more into, into Han Song's work later. And the new generation, the Balin Ho generation, it means people or writers that are born after the 80s uh, are um, a group of young uh, authors that um, uh, can uh, mix their experience. Sometimes abroad, they know much more, for example, English language, they have uh, uh, read uh, uh, contemporary science fiction, so they mix different kind of uh, origins, different kind of sources, different kind of inspiration, video games, anime, manga, uh, to blend it with their 
tradition, with their culture. So, for example, you have Chen Chufan, is one of the, the, the most important science fiction uh, authors. He's uh, uh, he won many, many awards in his country, and uh, he published a, a novel just lately called The Waste Time, published in English and in, my, in Italian and many other languages. One of my, my uh, preferred authors. Together, for example, with Xia Jia, uh, she's more like writing about uh, uh, fantastic uh, a blending of uh, tradition and uh, uh, what is like the millenary tradition of uh, uh, Chinese uh, fantastic and folklore with uh, in near future China. So, for example, talking about androids use as nurses, uh, talking about uh, how do we address the issues of aging population. Uh, all these uh, social uh, issues are very important for Oxia Jan. Really, really interesting and uh, beautiful stories. Um, I will not go into all of them, but you can see Bao Shu, Hao Jinfang, also uh, very famous. She uh, won a, a Nebula Award for the Folding Beijing, uh, so uh, social issue very important uh, related to uh, how biopolitics reshapes the society uh, through, of course, the buildings and according to you know revenues and 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 money. So she also had some problems because this is a kind of delicate issue in China. Um, and I will mention also uh, Jan Ran, uh, also a journalist, uh, previous experience as journalist, explored social and individual issues related to uh, technology. And uh, also uh, Tang Fei, also very interesting young author. She uh, mixes a uh, new wave style uh, with uh, postmodern uh, and contemporary uh, science fiction. But uh, the progression and the development of science fiction is so big <laughs> and fast in China that I have come across a new definition just some months ago that is the Lin Lin Ho generation, the author born after year 2000. And I just like to mention two new emerging uh, female writers. Um, there are many, many female writers in Chinese science fiction. Bella Han and uh, Mu Ming. Uh, I'm particularly interested in in both of them, um, I will uh, try to translate some things of, uh, of their works. They look very, very promising. And uh, on top of the writers, uh, the science fiction um, scene uh, includes also uh, emerging uh, studies, emerging scholars, and uh, projects about uh, the critic also of uh, science fiction. Uh, let me say that uh, the mainstream is getting more interested in what science fiction writers are writing about because science fiction reality is the present time of China. So many of the projects like uh, social control or uh, cameras in schools or the social credit system or, you know, biotechnology, genetic manipulation, all these things looks really, really, uh, you know, interesting from one part and risky from the other. So it's necessary to, to talk about that. So it's necessary to start a discussion about these things that science fiction normally talks about. So I would like to mention, of course, the person that really uh, made possible my visit and my knowledge of Chinese science fiction, which is Professor Wu Yen. I've invited him in, uh, in Italy uh, three years ago and he invited me back in China. So that's where I started to learn all the, uh, the all this, this information and, and get to know a lot of people, a lot of writers. Uh, Professor Wu Yen uh, is really um, the, 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 the big expert and uh, he has been there for a very long time, keeping the flag high, even in very hard times. So I really owe him big and uh, not just for me, but for, in general, for, for Chinese science fiction. Um, so he moved from Beijing Normal University to the Southern University of Shenzhen now, and uh, he's still keeping a uh, group of people. And what is most interesting is that his students are now a generation of uh, scholars and critics that are sitting in many other 
uh, university like uh, Xi'an, uh, Xiaojia, like uh, uh, Feidao in Beijing, like uh, Jiang Fan in uh, Chongqing, uh, like um, oh, I don't remember his name, but is in Chengdu. Uh, oh, that's difficult to to remember all the names. I'm sorry, uh, but then uh, um, I have to mention, of course, uh, Fei Dao is the the, guy, the young person, the guy, the young man you see here on the left. Uh, sorry, on the right, and then on the on the um, on the left you see uh, Professor Sun Wei, and uh, he teaches at the Wellesley College in uh, in the USA uh, at the moment. So he has promoted China science fiction outside of China. Uh, and I had the the honor and the pleasure to to witness the opening uh, ceremony of the China Science Fiction Academy in December uh, last year in uh, in Chengdu. So they told me they are starting to produce a number of papers and works, um, very much like the science fiction studies, mainly focused on national and international uh, science fiction. So now I want to go into what's around. Uh, science fiction, the phenomenon of science fiction in China, because it is an exploding uh, and very lively experience, uh, especially if you manage to go to one of the international science fiction conventions. Um, what struck me immediately when I went to the first uh, science fiction convention in Chengdu, it's two things. The first one is the average age of the people, uh, which is very low. Uh, when you go to a convention in the U.S. or Europe, you see very old people, <laughs> uh, like 65, 60, 50, stuff like that. In, in Chinese conventions, it's like uh, 18, 20, 30 years old. And uh, so that's, that's very good because it gives a lot of energy, of enthusiasm, a lot of uh, passion for, for the genre. Um, and of course, you can see uh, the, the big name. Da Liu, <laughs> the big, big Liu, <laughs> uh, is uh, Liu Qixin. Um, so there are many conventions and many um, awards uh, that uh, are organized and given every year. I just mentioned here some of them. Another, the fifth international science fiction convention in Chengdu. Uh, a lot of people gather. Uh, the second important thing that I forgot to say is that there is a direct involvement of the public institutions. Uh, so um, the organizations could get uh, funding and money and finance from uh, the universities, from the regional uh, party, uh, from the city council, from many different institutions, even uh, the private uh, companies, um, so, uh, the old feeling is that um, there, is a, there, is a, there is a real interest, uh, that it's coming from different parts of society, not just uh, the fandom, but also the public sector, uh, the institutions and the private sector. And uh, let me tell you, just the last pr uh, project that uh, was developed some months ago, um, the Chongqing Fishing Castle Science Fiction Workshop, where I've been... Uh, invited and I will lead uh, a writing uh, workshop to help uh, young writers, young talented Chinese science fiction writers to, to, to pub, to write their stories. It's like a one month course uh, together with a very uh, talented and good uh, Chinese science fiction writers all together. Um, so the environment is made up also of uh, a lot of magazines and publishers and foundations. I mentioned here some of the companies that I visited uh, in uh, Chengdu, in Beijing, in Chongqing, uh, in Shenzhen. Um, all these cities have uh, a science fiction scene. So you can see, for example, Science Fiction World is the biggest magazine of science fiction in the world, whereas uh, Asimov of Fantasy and Science Fiction, which are the most important U.S. magazines uh, normally print 30,000 copies. Uh, Science Fiction World publishes 400,000 copies. So you can see that the scale <laughs> and the numbers are quite different. Uh, Future Affairs Administration, they develop uh, different kind of pro projects, uh, whether it's books or comics or movies or games. Uh, they are uh, really into science fiction. And uh, Storycom also, uh, they helped us to translate some of the stories from 
uh, Chinese into Italian. And uh, you can see also Science Fiction uh, Growth Foundation in Shenzhen is a foundation that is dedicated to help writers uh, to, you know, they give them some money as an award uh, to think about writing their stories and not to think too much about money. Yes, I know it sounds like magic, but uh, this is the situation at the moment in, uh, in China. Uh, more publishing houses, Bofan Culture, uh, Guangzhou Blue Ocean Press, Eight Light Minutes uh, from Chengdu. Uh, so you can see that all these um, um, activities, they create and generate a lot of, uh, of books, a lot of stories that go out from China into the world. So here I mentioned some of the anthologies that you can find in English and some of them in Italian. Uh, you can, of course, uh, have a look and check them out. Uh, Visible Planets, edited by Ken Liu, uh, Touchable on Reality, uh, some of the Apex uh, Book of World Science Fiction. You can find uh, Chinese stories there. But um, uh, most of all, you find them on online magazines. So Clark's World, in collaboration with Storycom, uh, Lightspeed, Apex, uh, Zui, uh, Science Fiction World, Paper Republic, all these are um, venues where you can find science fiction in translation from Chinese. Uh, in Italian, uh, my personal contribution has been uh, quite consistent over the last four years. We have published uh, many anthologies, many personal collections. Uh, we have brought Chinese science fiction to the attention of uh, the Confucius Institute and many other uh, media. Uh, these anthologies are uh, important because they are in dual language. They are with the original Chinese text and the translation in Italian. So this is the first ever uh, books that have this kind of uh, uh, feature. And uh, they represent uh, the best of the um, contemporary Chinese science fiction authors. And okay, let me just tell you that in 10 minutes, uh, we will stop the first uh, part. The second part is not so much uh, full of content. We will keep more conversation and I will open up the, um, the microphone to the participants. Um, so you see the, uh, these are the, the books. Uh, the first one is Nebula. It features stories by Chen Chufang, Tia Jia, Professor Wu Yan and Liu Qixin. Um, we have We've been very lucky. This the book sold a lot of copies, and uh, it created um, a lot of uh, talk uh, because a lot of people didn't even know that something like giant science fiction existed. Um, and uh, after that, uh, we have uh, published the the second book, which is called the Sinosfera. Uh, the first one, uh, it was really difficult to do it because we had no expertise, no no help at all. Uh, we just could uh, translate some stories from English, some uh, one from, uh, from Chinese, thanks to Chiara Cigarini. Uh, the second one was translated directly all from Chinese. Uh, we are a very small press, so you can imagine how difficult it, uh, it is. So it's a kind of little miracle that we could manage to do it. And uh, the last one is uh, Artificina, is more focused on new emerging writers. Um, uh, Fan Yilun, uh, Zhao Lei, Gudi, uh, Regina Kanyuang, and Pen um, It's It's also about this idea of an artificial China in relation to a natural China. So these two natures that talk to each other, sometimes conflict with each other. I wanted to give examples of this relationship, you know, uh, between natural and artificial. Um, I think that uh, uh, the most important uh, writer at the moment in, in China science fiction is Han Song. And uh, I have uh, made a big effort to, to, to translate from Chinese, thanks to Lorenzo Andorfato, uh, a collection of eight uh, short stories. This is the first uh, anthology of Han Song outside of China. I'm very proud of this. Uh, I consider him really uh, an exceptional writer quite scary sometimes, really hard to read sometimes, but really, really uh, wonderful, a wonderful writer. And I hope uh, the people can, that can read 
his works in Chinese or in Chinese can appreciate as much as I do. Let me say that Han Song explores this future China where some, some, some elements are, you know, contradicting, are clashing the kind of development that China is going through. The price that the people have to pay in order for, for the modernization, uh, the effect of globalization on, on, on humanity. Uh, with, with really these short stories, he can manage to uh, project all this and extrapolate all these uh, worries and fears and hopes into the future. Um, I think it uh, really deserves uh, this kind of translation and many more, I hope. Um, and um, my relationship with China is so so tight now, so deep that uh, every year, uh, thanks to the help of the Confucius Institute in Pisa and the other Confucius Institute that support these kind of uh, invitations and visits uh, like Turin, like Milan, like Venice and Naples, uh, I can invite some authors. And uh, in 2018, I invited Chen Chufan and uh, you can see we published his book. So we went on tour to some of the um, uh, important uh, book fairs. Um, okay, sorry for the audio. All right, I hope you can you can hear me good. Uh, okay, and then after uh, Chen Chufan, we have invited Xia Jia uh, last year. Uh, she also visited the Pisa Book Festival, and she visited Siena and uh, many other places, Milan. Um, it was. Uh, really nice tour and uh, I hope that this year I can invite uh, um, uh, Han Song, uh, hopefully, if the, the virus, <laughs> I don't know, it, it's difficult but we will try, we will try to do our best. Um, so this is it, I have five minutes here and uh, I was quite fast maybe, but this is the, uh, my last uh, um, impressions and my last visit to to China I was in Chongqing with the, um, with my friend Jan Fan and uh, was the, the uh, Xia Jia in a Pisa Book Festival and with Regina at the Worldcon in uh, in Dublin where we promoted Chinese science fiction um, so we have like four minutes now I will stop the uh, presentation here but um, now I will open up the mic and let me just do it. Okay, now you're all unmuted. And uh, I hope it was clear, sorry for the, <laughs> the, the wrong start in Italian language. <laughs> I was so uh, out of my mind. Uh, but um, uh, we can have a break in three minutes and we can talk uh, I open up all the questions and we can share discussion for the next uh, uh, 40 minutes, okay? Fabiana, you want to say something? I, I just uh, linked on the, on the chat uh, the, the, the link for the next session, so okay. it's, it's easier to, to get inside. And uh, yeah, if, we, if it's okay for everyone, next session will be dedicated to the Q&A session. Uh, if you have any kind of question you want to ask to Francesco, any curiosity, yeah, feel the, free I, to. I think there were some questions. Uh, that I don't know if you if you get them. Uh, I cannot find them. Uh, I'm on the chat, but I can see any question actually. So okay. Uh, uh, Mm, the the person who asked yeah. the question post it again on the, the next chat maybe it's going to be easier for everyone yeah where is it oh chat here it is okay oh yeah i found it uh, okay uh let me see how much we have uh, okay uh do you know about uh the translation well yeah it's been translated the three body problem is being translated problema dei tre corpi is being translated in Italian. Um, okay. Oh, there are no other uh, questions. So, 
Um, let, let, let's do like this. Um, I can uh, go into uh, some other issues. I can go into, in, let's, let's say, deeper into some elements of Chinese science fiction. Uh, I wanted to give you a general introduction at the moment. Uh, so if there are no other questions, I will keep that moment for uh, expanding on some, on some elements. Um, I will just, um, uh, but you can write, you can write your questions here and they will, they, I will keep them, I will remember them. Um, we, we can. So less than a minute left. So if, uh, I don't know if you want to say something to conclude this first session. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, three books. What would I choose? Okay. I will. I will <laughs> answer that uh, later. Uh, let's do like this. Okay, you can have a break, uh, and we will meet again at four uh, four o'clock. Uh, I will have a coffee, and uh, and uh, uh, you can also think about your questions. And uh, next session, we will have more like conversation and. Uh, uh, Relax. Talk about uh, your curiosity about anything else. Okay. I'll see you soon. Uh, the link is there, so just remember to connect to the next page. Okay. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Thank you, Francesco. Bye.